Welcome to Mediocre Gaming, and today we're playing Deep Rock Galactic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Zero. Let's get to it. So today we're doing the deep dive, codenamed Loser's Darkness. But before we get to that, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to be notified of all future episodes as soon as they go live. So let's get into it. Stage one of the deep dive has parasites, alien eggs, and a dreadnought. Parasites, of course, is a modifier that means whenever you kill a medium or bigger enemy, they explode and then, or they, you know, <laughs> they die off and then a parasite pops out of it and comes after you. Parasite is, you know, a small enemy, so it doesn't take a lot for you to take them out, but it's an extra thing to be looking out for when you're already looking out for quite a bit already. Dreadnought, of course, is the boss-like creature of Deep Rock Galactic, and alien eggs, you're going to be looking for that organic matter on the sides of the level and dig in towards the glowing red pulsing light. Dig it out and put it into the mule. Now this time around, we got the twins, the Arbalist and the Lacerator. They burrow and go immune. They don't have a shielded stage, but they do share health. So when one gets low, they'll both dig, burrow in, and then when they pop up, they'll still be immune, and then they'll share their health, and then they'll go back to fighting. So if you don't make sure that you're evening out that damage, it is going to cause problems for you in the long run because you're going to have one of the Dreadnoughts sharing a lot of health with the other one. So you're going to be using a lot more ammo than you need. So make sure that you are trying to keep that damage even. Although, it's better to do a lot of damage to one rather than have them give the op or give them the opportunity to do a lot of damage to you. Yeah, and it always seems like right before you take them out, they burrow, they go immune, and then they share health. So... Even if you think you can take one out before it goes immune, guess again. It almost never works out that way. But once you have all the alien eggs and the dreadnoughts are taken care of, call in the drop pod and make your way onward. Now this is a good time to point out that the deep dive is a three-stage raid-like environment where you can play with your buddy Bosco or with up to three other players either pre-made or match made. Just know that it will likely take longer for you to get through each stage if you're playing solo than if you're playing in a group of three or four, although your mileage may vary. Bosco is pretty awesome, but there's only so much that he can do. Now, additionally, Make sure that you're grabbing that special brew from the Abyss Bar before you go into the deep dive as it will work on every stage, not just the first one. So we had gotten uh, Rocky Mountain, which works really well for the Magma Core. Rocky Mountain means that you don't have to use as many pickaxe swings to get through the terrain. So instead of, you know, two, it's going to be one. Instead of three, it's going to be two. So you don't have to sit there and dig at the at the dirt. Even if you're a driller, it's going to help you out quite a bit. So that's it for stage number one. Moving on to stage number two. All right, stage number two of the deep dive. This time around, we've got a sabotage mission, volatile guts, and a dreadnought. Once again, we got the twins. So if you didn't know how to take care of them the first time, you should know by now how to take care of the twins this time around. 
uh, assuming that you got the same Dreadnought as you did in the first stage. Now, Volatile Guts means that whenever you take out an enemy, they will, instead of drop, you know, kind of drop over, they're going to explode and do damage in an area of an effect wherever they died. So, it works as a double-edged sword. It can work in your favor or against you. If you're close to an enemy, uh, when you take it out, it's going to damage you. And if you are uh, taking an enemy out and there's other enemies around it, you're going to do damage to all those guys. So, it works both ways. Make sure that you're keeping enemies at arm's length whenever possible. One of the most annoying things about the twins is that sometimes when you have one left that they'll go immune and they'll just start rampaging throughout the level and you can't do any damage to them so you basically have to wait for them to come out of the immune phase so then you can do some damage. So there we go. Now the... There are a few stages that I'm sure you've noticed are or to do take a little bit longer than other stages. Sabotage missions, uh, the drill dozer, escort mission, the salvage mission, the mini mules, those all take a little bit longer than if you're doing, uh, you know, let's say the aquarics or a regular mining mission or dreadnought mission, something like that. Uh, some of those you can really just burn through and other ones, it takes a little bit longer no matter how good you are or how good your team is because with the sabotage mission you got to look for those power stations you have to hack the power stations and of course there's two of them so you have to do it twice and then move on and of course uh, we had to take out that dreadnought all these things are using lots and lots of ammo and of course uh, health so we're keeping our eyes open for uh, red sugar and of course gold and nitra on every stage of the deep dive since that is very important for your survival so of course nitra is going to keep you flush with ammo and health by calling in those resupplies and gold is going to give you more credits at the end of the deep dive for cosmetics and upgrades. So both very important. Now the caretaker is another boss-like creature of Deep Rock Galactic. It is a rival machine. So this rival company has been setting up on Hoxies and Nobody likes competition, as I've heard, competition is for suckers, so get rid of your competition so you don't have to worry about it. Caretaker goes immune, has shielded stage, you gotta take out those vents on the corners, and then once you do that, then one of the four eyes will open, damage the eye until it goes immune, or until you get to that next chunk of health which will put you into the next phase now each phase brings something a little bit different you can have shredders you can have sniper turrets you can have phase bombs any of those things is going to make it a little bit difficult so once you get past the first one you're going to want to fly through and just burn down the caretaker as quickly as possible because it becomes more dangerous the longer you're in the fight with it. But once you take it out, grab that core, put it on the mule, and call in the drop pod and make your way to the next stage of the deep dive. There we go, we got that data vault that the caretaker was keeping safe underneath it nobody can get to it until you take care of the caretaker and the caretaker is no small feat so uh the rival corporation was probably feeling pretty good about 
leaving all that data there. Of course, Deep Rock Galactic is more than willing to take advantage of that. Send in some dwarves, which are uh, easily replaceable, <laughs> expendable, and then move on. Now, this is a good time to point out that everything carries over from one stage of the deep dive to the next. That includes your ammo, your health, your grenades, traversal tools, everything, including what is in your pockets. So if you're not able to drop your gold and nitro into the mule before you get on the drop pod, it'll still be there in the next stage of the deep dive. Just make sure that you drop it into the drop pod before you leave the deep dive on stage number three, just so you can get credit for it. Now you either follow the mule back to the drop pod or make your own way back and then defend. So you have to fight on the way there or defend the drop pod. It's your choice. That's it for stage number two. Moving on to stage number three. All right, on to the third and final stage of the deep dive. And you're probably saying, whew, it's about time. This time around, we've got a Quarks, we've got Shield Disruption, and a Black Box. So Black Box, of course, is a zone control. You have this dome sphere that goes around the Black Box once you uh, get it going. The more people that are in that, the faster it goes. The fewer people, the slower it goes. And if nobody's in that that sphere, that dome, then you start losing progress rapidly. If you get down to 0%, you've failed, and you'll have to start the deep dive over from stage number one. But once you get to 100%, then you can move on to the rest of the deep dive. Now, because it's an Aquark mission and shield disruption... You've got a lot of things going against you. Hopefully you've got a storehouse of nitra that you can call on for extra supplies and health, especially on this stage of the deep dive. Shield disruption, of course, means you have no shields. Everything comes straight off of your health. So every tick of damage just brings you one step closer to going down. And it doesn't help that it's in the magma core where there's lava everywhere, it seems like. So just stepping in the lava is going to take a little bit off of your health in this stage of the deep dive. And because it's in a quark mission, you're going to have enemies coming at you on more regular basis so you're gonna have enemies pop up from time to time but you're also gonna have swarms of enemies coming up you know first every five minutes then four minutes then three minutes so it's going to be happening faster and faster so the faster you get out of this stage the better look around sometimes there's extra quarks uh sometimes there's only the number of, of quarks that you need so make sure that you are keeping your eyes open for the glowing flex on the side of the level. Dig into it and grab that big chunk of a quark. There's no mule, so you'll have to hoof it back. But even then, uh, once you get everything done, you can call in the drop pod and make your way out. But there will be two minutes that you have to survive either by defending or by running around. But well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on social media. And thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you next time. I like your mother, Des. Stop attacking me. Drop pod has landed and is ready for takeoff. Is this safe? Drop pod departing in T-minus three minutes. Time to fill the air with lead! Watch your fire! Resupply order! Supplies are on the way. 
Priority to resupply. Hang in there. Supplies are on the way. Let's bring it home. Rock on! This never gets old. You're sweet. I'm gonna hit. Hit. Get into cover. Yeah. Good work. We're pulling you back in. Rockety rock of these boys here. Rocks and blast! Go! Station.